is this is this on right now can can you hear me can everyone hear me welcome to my surface duo conference call this whole video was shot edited rendered and uploaded on my Surface Duo. Obviously, except for some of the B-roll we're gonna be using, I had to use another camera for that. It's not like I've got another Surface Duo just lying around. If you follow a channel like mine, it's probably because you like to see our gadgets pushed to their limits. And one would hope that you likely agree or at least appreciate the sentiment that in tech reviewing, there really aren't winners and losers. The main goal should always be trying to figure out who a gadget is for, who's going to be the exact right fit for something like this. But the reality of the premium tier, especially the more expensive gadgets that we get our hands on, should be more focused, more specialized, and more niche. Surfaces are specific and specialized versions of computers detailing how Microsoft thinks we should be using software and services. I don't think anyone's really expecting a huge user base for a first generation pocket surface. But there are going to be people today, people right now who will absolutely love what this thing has to offer and are willing to deal with some of the compromises. That's why it's so critical. It's more important that we deliver good information to those people because there are going to be fewer of them. Rather than producing endless video after video after video, stroking the egos of a larger audience of people who were never seriously going to consider something like this. And once we get a good handle on who might really like the Surface Duo, from there we can certainly detail some of those issues, some of those compromises, and look forward to future iterations, you know, things that we would hope to see improved on a next generation duo. And this, this right here, this video that you're watching right now is just the first step of a much longer, much larger conversation. Because we true tech fans understand, we know that embargo reviews built largely on pre-release software have nothing to do with the real world consumer experience for those people who really get one of these in their hands. How this phone ages over time, how consumers will really use it, especially after a couple updates, because Microsoft has promised to update this thing for a while. Now that the Duo is shipping out to consumers, the real conversation starts here. The conversation has not been concluded just because a couple larger YouTube channels said, review. I'm a mobile content creator and producer, and I make a lot of stuff with my phone. So especially for these kinds of gadget reviews and conversations, I like to look at what the manufacturer's claims are and see how those claims might affect or impact my workflow. I think it's fair to share some concerns for this camera. I'm shooting this in 4K, 60 frames per second. And the main aesthetic for this is certainly more focused on the boardroom than some kind of grand artistic expression or content creator aesthetic. I think it's fair to consider that there are likely some people out there who never use any camera on their phones but their selfie cameras. I don't necessarily think that's what Microsoft is going for, that selfie shooter crowd, but we've got a front facing camera that performs pretty well against other selfie options. We're looking at an option that needs to survive boardrooms, conference calling, and still take the occasional selfie competing well against the smaller cameras on the fronts of many phones. I think it's worth reiterating that Microsoft probably doesn't care about making the best Android phone they can. They're trying to make a pocket surface. And I think that's an important distinction when we're trying to convey this experience to people who might be interested in this hardware. Which brings me to the specs. And they're totally fine. They're better than fine. I'll have a full standalone video, another episode of my series by the benchmarks, looking at real world performance, because talking about performance is more than just running one synthetic benchmark. We can point to the specs on paper, and this has the Snapdragon 855, and that's 10 less. It performs 10 worse than the current Snapdragon 865. I'm being a little snarky about this. We should expect a certain tier of performance when we're spending at a certain level. I completely understand all that, just as we had the same kind of grumbles about phones like the Z Flip. The Surface Duo will fall behind the absolute top premium options from Qualcomm in the year 2020, but it absolutely trounces phones sporting the mid-ranger 700 series chipsets like 
it's not even close. So I know people like to talk up specs, but why? What are you doing on your phone right now that requires some idea of Snapdragon 865 performance? I'm literally showing you 4K 60 frame per second video shot, edited, and rendered on this phone. And it rendered that video pretty darn quick. Are you rendering UHD video projects from your phone? Because I'm really trying to use my phones to replace my laptops. It's totally okay if you're not trying to drive that kind of performance out of a mobile. But if you aren't, if you're a tier below what I'm trying to accomplish on a phone, something tells me you're probably gonna be fine. So last year's premium chipset really doesn't bother me. I don't think it's gonna hold many people back. It's not gonna hold me back for getting my work done in a timely fashion. And still with performance that rivals consumer grade laptops for some surprising heavy lifting. And that's the hook, isn't it? If I spend $1,400 on a phone, will it allow me to keep my laptop at home? You know, just jotting down some notes. I'm doing this mostly off the cuff, but I've got a couple little notes here on, on my monitor. And I wrote those notes in Word on the Surface Duo using a little Bluetooth keyboard. Worked really well while I was also streaming a video and moving back and forth to chat with some of my friends on the Discord. Add a couple accessories and this thing really does start to feel like a proper computer, not just another expensive phone. I really feel like most techies have forgotten that we're supposed to be looking at market disruption, spending more and more, more powerful gadgets, more powerful phones aren't here to pat you on the back for racking up higher synthetic benchmark scores. We're supposed to be looking at capability, what we can get out of that investment and whether or not this investment can help us stave off costs on other screen sizes. Early days, but these dual screen devices make me feel even more comfortable leaving medium-sized screens at home whenever I'm gonna go and travel. And I just love the idea for whenever I decide to jump back on an airplane again of traveling with something like this, as opposed to trying to cart some kind of laptop, which never really fits on that janky, fiddly tray that bu bumps up against my knees. And I'll be frank, because I am pushing the Duo out of its comfort zone by making my first video a video production video on the Surface Duo. The claims for this product are not like other companies talking up cinematic content creation. Microsoft is not claiming that this phone is gonna automatically turn you into an instant movie director. So we're just getting started. This is just the beginning. We've gotta take a closer look at software, especially after some more updates. If you saw my setup live stream, you already got a sneak peek at how well this phone handles external displays. Again, can we use this like a proper computer? And then I always think this is interesting, but especially for a device this shockingly thin, should we be concerned about things like radio reception, wireless performance? We should at least be considering dual display, its own proper market segment, as opposed to always using it as the less cool whipping boy trying to make folding phones the real thing. They're two separate categories, folks. Different pros and cons. It's okay that they both exist, though dual screen is superior. We should be testing claims and pushing these products to their limits to see what they can really do. I've had the Duo for less than a day, and I've already managed to shoot this with it. It's not about the specs on paper. We should always be asking, we should always be talking about how you really use the gadgets you spend your money on. Well, that's enough rambling from me. Thank you everyone for joining me on this conference call. We'll try and hit some breakout rooms so we can have more granular conversations. By breakout rooms, I mean, drop some comments down below. We're at the very beginning. This is the wild west of smartphone design. There is no correct answer on how to do this. We're only just starting a whole new range of experimental designs and hardware features. And especially if there's some things that you want me to test, I'm gonna be trying to dig in pretty deep on the Surface Duo. Drop some comments down below, let's have a chat. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. I'm always super appreciative 
of those of you who do go down below my videos to check out those links or also some of the uh, the merch that I've been coming out with lately, which helps me not pack every video I produce with baked in ads and sponsorships. You can check out the support page over on somegadgetguy.com for a current list of all of my affiliates and partnerships or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen. That's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me planning future videos and reviews. They're just really the best people, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.